morning and a warm welcome to the Sport for Business Daily. It is a great pleasure to be joined this morning by a multiple All-Ireland winner in Dublin's Ladies Football Captain and KPMG Ambassador for 2020, Sinead Ahern. Very good morning, Sinead. Good morning, Rob. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's great to see you, have you on here again. The, the principal aim of the conversation this morning really is to talk about the latest chapter, in fact, and somewhat sadly, the final chapter in the 20 by 20 movement. It kicks off today and it really is a case of looking at where we've come from, but also, also questioning where it is that we're going to next in terms of equality, women in sport. With the best will in the world, you're at the experienced end of the, the ladies' football career. You've seen so many changes coming through over the past decade. Where do you think we are now compared to where we were when you set out as a footballer a couple of years ago? Yeah, and look, I suppose the you know the campaign has has sort of put it out there as to you know where where do we want to go next? Um, you know to, we might be closing uh, the the last chapter of the campaign, but you know not to leave it there. And I think we are at an inflection point for you know for women in sport. We've made. Um, you know, probably got to the position where we're making strides uh, every five years that we might have been making, you know, every 10 years or 12 years before that. So, you know, we've managed to speed up, I think, uh, the level of progress that we're making. But equally, I still think we have a long way um, to go, I suppose, over, you know, my career from a football perspective. You know, you probably had years where uh, even at inter-county level, we, you know, we were struggling to get a manager. Um, you know, we were uh, going from uh, All Ireland winning in All Ireland to being relegated in the league just due to you know huge turnover in in panels and you know not necessarily having uh, dedicated training facilities and and moving around and trying to get the basics in in some way as to you know getting your meals after training and, and that type of thing. So I think we've covered all ends of the spectrum in terms of you know the highs and the lows. Um, I think we've had a pretty good, uh, stable environment over the last, uh, you know, six or seven years. And I think Greg McGonagall, you know, uh, brought, brought us on in terms of getting to our performance, couldn't quite make the breakthrough, but uh, sort of settled into uh, a routine as such. And I think uh, Nick and his management team coming in, um, you know, obviously we've been fortunate to have success over the, the last few years. And uh, it's been built on, I suppose, yeah, having, um, you know, sponsors come in behind us, having uh, facilities and access, but... Uh, I suppose the most important thing is still trying to get the, the best out of the, the, the playing group and the, and the players. And I think, you know, it's been a fantastic privilege to be to be a part of that group over the last few years and to, to see where we can bring it to. Um, we have come a long way from 2010 and that, uh, you know, that first All-Ireland win and a crowd mm -hmm. in Crow Park of something around about the 20,000 mark. Now we're up above 50,000, 56,411, whatever the, the, the exact number was. But those are those are numbers that are there on the on the high days and the holidays of an all Ireland final. Yeah. The hashtag for the for this latest campaign is think it, ask it. So what can we do as a society? What can ladies football do as a sport to translate that fifty six thousand plus into more players coming through, more people going along to see club finals in the fullness of time and a greater sense that we expect to see ladies football semi-finals quarter-finals round robin matches on the television and in the media to the same extent as we see the men's yeah and i suppose you know you said it there is to, to think and ask it uh, if we don't see uh, crowds at matches it's why is that and it, you know if we don't have um you know games in in the best venues why is that we need to to question uh, why these things are if 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 we're not getting uh, numbers to games is it because you know they've they don't they don't know the matches on they you know they don't have uh, they, they're being asked to travel to a venue that's not suitable um is it because we don't have enough coverage in, in media where we're actually you know putting critical analysis out there that they they understand what they're actually going to see they know the players that they're watching out for um you know, they're interested in the tactical nuances of the game because they've read up about it and then they're going to a game to, you know, to watch it in action. Uh, you know, are we discussing women's sport uh, in, in our own social circles? Um, you know, are we seeing enough of it in, in our clubs as to, well, there's a game on on Wednesday night. It's a big championship game. And the question isn't, oh, is it a men's game or a women's game? It's, well, it's a club game. We're in a, you know, championship final, let's say, in the women's on, on Saturday. Two clubs, Chemical Croaks and, and Fox Cabin, in a normal 
situation uh, in, in Dublin, I'd be pretty hopeful that you'd be getting a big crowd for that because I think the interest has, you know, come on over over COVID for that sort of sense of community and club. And you know, there's a match on. I want to go support that team, and I want to find out more about that team, see them in action, bring my kids along to see it, and that it, you know, it, it all sort of rolls together as to build the momentum on that. As to you know, we're all asking questions of ourselves and our clubs and our societies as to how can we really build women's sport and, and you know, not just accept a, a minimum standard for it and really try and, and get to best practice uh, amongst it. It is a kind of a, a relentless ask for of, of all of us to, to keep on doing that. And no different to you, you keep on training up with Sylvester as you keep on going in and training with Dublin when that time comes as well. The, 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 the continual push in order yeah. to actually sort of make that happen. Is there, a, is there a potential danger that we might get to a point now where we've gone through two brilliant years in 2020 campaign that have pushed it to, to a continual level with a nudge every time there's a new chapter comes out? Is there a danger that we might need time to actually decompress a little bit from that campaign or is now the time to put the foot down? I think, look, I, I suppose you mentioned it, it's, it's been a campaign that has had sort of constant nudges let's say you know there's been a new chapter to come out and to sort of you know move the focus on or change the, the point of the focus so uh, I think that has been there to bring people along and to not let them take the foot off the pedal I, I think there probably is a danger that you take the foot off the pedal now particularly now with COVID and you know what's going to happen in terms of the level of brands that are, are there and um, you know how much um, government are able to put into sport um, in the country and I think that's a whole other question as to you know what level of focus that's that gets um but you know I, I think there has to be structures put in place to, to really put women's sport in the agenda whether that's having a dedicated you know person within a, a media team that's you know driving women in sport whether that's you know an ngb role where it's you know a particular focus on women's strategy in sport and you know people might say well you know you don't have a dedicated men's strategy in sport but you nearly do because that's where the whole focus seems to have been and you know, until we put more emphasis and more investment and work into it, you know, we're coming from a much lower base and a much lower platform. So you have to overemphasize, I feel, um, and, and to keep driving on. And I think there has to be strategies that are, you know, followed for, for education, for, for clubs, for whatever it is that, that puts it on the agenda and keeps it on the agenda, because otherwise you lose that momentum. Um, and, and I think it does need it. That final campaign video that's come out, looking back over it and looking back over nearly a hundred years of uh, you know of the, the coverage or lack thereof coverage mm. of, uh, of of women in sport, it, it continually throughout the decades that question has been asked of why not, and that's probably the best way to actually say why not. Um, you're you're doubled up in terms of the. Uh, your, your link into this element of the campaign. You're, you're employed on a full-time basis by KPMG, so that's your day job, as well as them supporting women's sports through this, through the Dublin team, through golf, through a variety of different means. How easy is it for, for you to actually walk in through the, through the doors of, of the office in the morning and actually feel that without overstating it, that you're there as an ambassador, that you are there as a representative of all that is good about women in sport. How does that play within the organisation on a day-to-day basis? Um, look, I, I suppose uh, I'm playing an amateur sport, so uh, yeah, the day job is is uh, you know number one, and I suppose that's where you put the the majority of your hours in. But I think it, it you know from a women's perspective, it's it's probably become more noticeable over my career. I mean, I joined not long after we won 2010 All Ireland final, um, and it wasn't it wasn't um, you know known or it wasn't sort of celebrated or it wasn't an event in there as such, compared to you know nearly 10 years down the line, you know, winning those all Ireland, um, you know, it's a much bigger deal and it, it was a much more noted, um, you know, I suppose, event to, for, for, the, for the firm to, to, to recognise that, um, you know, someone was involved in, in an all Ireland and, and you know, to, to celebrate that, I suppose, and, and obviously then KPMG, you know, kind of coming on board with it as a sponsor with, with Dublin, uh, you know, LGFA as well. So it's great to get that backing and to, you know, sort of recognise that. I think for brands, there is a huge, um, opportunity there to go in behind women's sport I think there's great value for money in trying to drive that on and really you know as I said not just putting money in to be seen to be putting money in but to really actually go after it and try and drive your brand around it like I mean you would have seen that with the you know the legal campaign getting involved with the LGFA and, and how they really 
took a campaign where they wanted to go after it, um, you know, and, and to, to sort of be best in, in class at doing it. So I think more brands can do that. And, you know, KPMG have got behind the 20 by 20 movement, got behind our, our, our football team as well, and really just tried to, I suppose, um, invest in the game, but, but equally recognise that there is um, good branding opportunities for, for, for sponsors to get involved. It is, it is a big year um, after a, a series of big wins for, for the Dublin ladies team. Um, this year's championship is going to be very different. We're not quite sure yet whether we'll be able to actually go to the, to the grounds to watch. Um, mm. the, the, the training, though, is going to kick back in, in, a, in a couple of weeks' time. How do you feel as the, as the long-term captain? How has it been trying to keep the group of players together mentally, if not physically, over the, over the course of what would have been, uh, you know, another great summer of sport? Yeah, I think it's been difficult. I suppose the, you know, the uncertainty of it is difficult for teams to try and, and, and plan in. And then, you know, obviously you don't know what time scale you're dealing with. So how do you sort of, you know, plan to peak or, or taper off at, at different times? So, I don't think it's going to be a comparable season, um, you know, in terms of how you would normally take it. And even in terms of, you know, playing a team sport, you're always trying to develop the closeness of the team and the bond of the team. And, you know, that's difficult to do. And, it, you know, obviously the social uh, aspect of it, um, you know, you have to, to recognise that we're not operating in the same environment. And, you know, will we be able to, you know, be around dressing rooms and have that sort of you know connection or you know before you go out to training or will it be a case that we'll be just arriving and you know getting out of the car and in, in the driving rain in the middle of November and, and straight onto the pitch I don't know you know so all of those questions I think are, are you know going to have to, to play out over the next uh, few weeks but I suppose the choice is you know would you have nothing or or do you have to just adapt to, to the circumstances that you're faced with and I think every team will be um you know trying to put their best foot forward on that but um, yeah, I suppose at the moment it's, it's just trying to get the, the plans in place to uh, to try and kick things off, and I don't think you'll be able to look too far down the line. And you know, six weeks until our six or seven weeks until our first game. Um, once once we get back at it, so it won't be long to uh, to get it right. That's right. The, the the summer has been very much about about club. But I was lucky enough to be involved with the uh, the cooler team. We won the intermediate Dublin Championship there a couple of weeks back in the strange and very quiet circumstances of, mm. of Lawless Park. Have you enjoyed being back in with the with the group in in Malahide and Sylvester's and actually sort of getting in a sense back to the back to the roots, back to the basics? Yeah, I think it it has. You know, I think for people trying to, you know, I suppose I'm I'm playing a team sport and and when we were sort of, you know, tipping away ourselves in the in, in, in lockdown and you couldn't uh, train in a group, I think it kind of just really brings home the value of a team sport and, and being involved in a team environment. So I think it was nice to, to get back into, into that and, and yeah, to, I suppose, spend uh, more time with the club than, you know, we might have in the in the, the previous years. But equally, I do think in Dublin, we've, we've a pretty good um, balance between, you know, club and county normally. So, um, yeah, look, Club championships obviously have been played out at the, the height of the summer and it's been great to see people get back to, to local football. And I think that sense of community as well, you know, those before maybe the restrictions were kind of, you know, paired, paired back up again. You kind of had, you know, lots of teams being around uh, the pitches and coming over to see games that were on around that, which I think was was nice to see. You know, I know at any of our sort of earlier matches, there was always a lot of kids that had built it over from other pitches or, you know, players from, from different teams that were in and around the grounds and, you know, came over for a look. So I think that's, that's been good to see as well, just that kind of sense of everyone mad to get back and see a bit of live sport. We're, uh, we're looking to the future in terms of 2020, that hashtag of the campaign, which will be seen out across social media in that over the coming weeks, think it, ask it. If I had to put you on the spot to ask one question yourself, of mm. be it the media, be it the sponsors, in one sector that could actually make a difference. What would what would your question be? Um, I'll give you two, right? And I'd say I think funding is still is still something that I'd like to see um, improved, and of of government funding in particularly, I'd like to see you know more uh, directed at women. It's nearly a bias towards women's sport, to be honest, because I think it has more. I think it can do more with that, and I think it needs to do more with that investment across a whole range of sports and the second one I think is is of the media and for me it's still what what is the sticking point in in really developing critical analysis of women's sport because while we've managed to increase coverage I think a lot of it is still bare bones reporting or you know you, you kind of you see a, a very um 
basic match report without that level of sort of critical analysis and deeper coverage um, and analysis of games. And I think without that, you can't develop a long term following and base for the games that it can really, you know, read into a game and then go to it and sort of understand what they're watching. And therefore, did I enjoy that? Did it deliver on, you know, what I was expecting? And, and you know, what am I coming back for the next time around? So, yeah, for, for me, it's, it's trying to understand what's the, the next layer to to really bringing on uh, coverage of games and, um, you know, commentating on, on, on games on TV that we have that deep level of understanding and knowledge of the, of the games that, that continues to grow. Well done, you. Well, when you're given permission to ask one question in a subject that really matters, you should always ask two. So yeah, yeah. Not that. Um, it's been a pleasure, as always. The very best of luck with the campaign, the very best of luck in your continued career with KPMG, and of course, with the dubs as they go in search of another Brendan Martin Cup this year. Shea Hearn, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Rob. Thanks for having me on.